Shalom and welcome to this week's Bible study. Uh, this week we will be talking about praying in faith and we're looking at, um, there's a lot of different teachings about this, about, you know, how to show God that you are trusting Him when you pray. Um, some people say one thing and other people say another and we're going to look at the Bible. Some people even believe that, well, you're not actually supposed to ask, you're supposed to just thank Him that He's going to do it. And we're going to look at these teachings and see what the Bible actually says. And so we're going to go ahead and pray and get into the lesson. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and for your word and all your blessings. We pray that you will bless us today and teach us your word and help us to uh, learn what your word uh, says about praying and faith. Thank you, Lord, in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, and um, I know this is uh, late. Um, I usually do my recording on Wednesday and it's out. Uh, it comes out a little after midnight uh, on uh, Thursday morning and yesterday was really I've been just really busy and had some trouble with my video maker and last week I used a free one that had like a watermark on it and so this week I think I've got a better one um, and so hopefully but it looked like it was going to take like three hours to upload and it's so hopefully this will get put out soon <laughs> um and, uh, so we'll go ahead and start, um, you know, first thing, you know, God says, you know, we have to have faith when we pray, um, and is you know, um, and, you know, Jesus was really clear in Matthew 7, 7 through 12 that we do have to ask. It says, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Or well, what man is there of you whom, if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. So this is packed with quite a bit of stuff here. I mean, first of all, we do have to ask. You can't just... No one in the Bible does it say that uh, you just, you know, God already knows all. It does say that God knows all needs before we ask, but it still says to ask. And it does say that we are to ask with thanksgiving, but it still says to ask. Okay, so you do have to actually ask for what you need or sometimes what you want. And then, um, so asking is not a lack of faith. You don't just pray and say, um, God, I know that you know that. I need food this week, and so thank you that you're going to provide it. But you didn't, you know, in Christ Jesus' name, amen. Um, you didn't actually ask. We have to ask. We can't just thank God for everything. And, um, you know, we have to actually ask for it. And then also, so you don't show faith by just thanking God for things. That That's not in the Bible. It says many times, ask. Okay, John sixteen twenty three. Jesus said, And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. John fourteen fourteen says, If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. And then there's another verse that says, Ye have not because ye ask not. Um, you know, we have to ask. Um, and then, you know, it's not, and sometimes it's not where you just do just like a, little tiny prayer asking for something and just sit back oh god's going to take care of it i don't have to worry about it sometimes that works but other times we have to like you know have prayer and supplications and we have to really pray for something because the devil could be trying to stop it like in daniel you go to um the book of daniel and it talks about where michael the archangel uh was sent to daniel with an answer and he said it took him like 21 days to get to him because the prince of Persia, which was like the devil, or a devil, was um, fighting against him. I think it was actually Gabriel was trying to get to Daniel, and Michael had to come and help him fight off the prince of Persia so that he could get the answer to Daniel. And it took like three weeks. So sometimes, you know, you have to pray through, you gotta, you all prayers break down the devil's strongholds 
And then God can get us to answer faster. Now, yes, God is all powerful and everything, and He could just, you know, get rid of the devil and and all that. But God wants us to pray because, and He actually sometimes He wants us to beg Him for things, even for our needs. He actually wants us to beg Him for things because you have to look at Philippians four six through eight. It says, "Be careful for nothing." But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, thanks on these things. So you notice here it says, be careful for nothing. That means don't worry about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. So, we know what prayer is. That's asking, right? Okay. And in this verse, it actually means it's not just a simple asking. In this verse, specifically, the word prayer means to pray earnestly. And this is a Strong's number G4335. And then the word supplication is even stronger. Um... The, the word supplication, the first meaning of it is simple, like, petition, prayer, request. Um, so, it's like an asking on the surface is what the word means. And that's strong as number uh, G1162. But when you go into the deeper meaning, it actually roots back to a word meaning to beg. Okay? That is G1189. So, sometimes... If we're, you know, if you're praying for something, you're not getting, and God's not bringing it, and, and it's like a dire situation or something, I mean, you may need to get on your knees and on your face and just really beg him for it and, and pray and, you know, just really beg him for it um, because, you know, that's what the Bible says. And yes, you, and then after you ask him for it, you can, with Thanksgiving means, Thank you, you're saying, you just simply say, thank you that you will do this for me because I have asked you for it, and I believe you're going to do it, and thank you that you are going to do this for me. That's how you show your faith in prayer. You thank him after you ask him for it, and especially make sure you thank him after he does it. Okay, remember the ten lepers that Jesus cleansed and only one came back to thank him? Okay, make sure you always, even if you already thanked him that he's going to do it, when he does it, because we're supposed to be courteous to God, okay? At least be courteous to him. I mean, my goodness, he's a, he's God. He's he's our creator. He's the king of the universe. At least give him basic courtesy as we would with other people when they do something for us, okay? Um, you know, thank God for after he does it too. Um, that's what it means to be, to have Thanksgiving. And, and that's how you show that you're going, that you believe that he's going to do it. Okay, you believe that he's going to do it because you, after you've asked him for it, then you go ahead and say, well, thank you that you are going to do this because your word says that if I ask, and then I will receive. And if I uh, ask believing, I'll receive it. And I believe that you're going to do it. And, you know, you can remind God of what the Bible says. I mean, he doesn't absolutely need you to do that. But it's but he wants us to pray that way too. There's examples of that in the Bible where people prayed and like, told God about the scriptures and things that he had promised in scripture, okay? That's that's a really good way to pray. Um, and uh, now, if you notice here, if you go back, like I was saying, there's a lot in the in these verses. I've actually went further than just the basic prayer because in Matthew 7, 7, where it says that you ask and it shall be open, seeking you shall find, and, or asking you shall receive, knocking it shall be opened, and seeking you shall find. If you notice on down in Matthew 7, 12, the very last verse there, it says, Therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them, for this is the law and the prophet. So he's saying, because I, the Father is going to give you what you ask for, then you also help others. So helping others, whenever people ask you to help them and stuff, and you can do it, helping others um, is like a kind of a prerequisite you know, to getting your pros answered. If you're selfish and greedy and you don't ever help nobody when you can, I mean, you you know, um, if you can't help someone, then that's, that. then God sees your heart and he accepts that um, just as much as if you had given, okay? Uh, the Bible says that in another place, and I preached on that in the tithing and giving sermon I did, 
you know, I, I showed that. Um, and so, but, you know, if, if, so, you know, you have to do to others what you want them to do to you. You have to treat other people right and treat others like you want to be treated in order for God to bless you and give you uh, what you ask for in your prayers, okay? Even, even your needs, okay? Because, and that's what he's saying. He's talking about food here. Well, food's a need, okay? Um, and so those prerequisites, those requirements to get in our prayers answered, okay? Um, and to pray in faith does not mean that you always say just a quick prayer and be like, okay, yep, God's going to answer it. I know he's going to answer it. Or that you just thank God for everything and just thank him that he's going to provide your needs and you don't actually ask him to. Um, that's not showing faith. Showing faith is where you ask for it and then you thank him that he's going to do it. And then if you notice, it says in uh, Philippians 4, 6 to 8, it starts out saying, be careful for nothing. That means don't worry about anything. And then it says, but in everything by prayer and supplication, so that means sometimes you have to beg for things. You know, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known under God. So sometimes you got to get on your face and you got to pray for an hour or pray multiple times a day. And you are begging God to deliver you from a situation, from problems or something. And you're begging for his help. And, you know, you know, like if your car blows up and you need a new vehicle really bad and you don't have the money for it. And you're like, God, I am in dire need. I need you. You know, that's not the time when you pray like a five-second prayer and just be like, oh, God's going to take care of it. No, that's when you get on your face and you beg and you have supplication and you pray and you cry out to God saying, you know, I got to have help. I need you to come deliver me. And and he will do that. Um, and then if you notice that after he says all that, it says that when you pray, after you pray, you know, the peace of God which passes all understanding to so keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And then it goes right into the teaching on how we're supposed to think. And I realized that, wow, the in context, the teaching on what we are to think on, in context, that is to keep us from worrying about the things that we just prayed for. So... When you are in dire need and you're begging God, you've gotten done and you have prayed and you have cried out to God and you're begging God to do something to provide your needs, then he gives you that peace. You know, don't don't go back and start worrying about it. You would might need to keep praying and have more prayer times and stuff. But you don't worry about it. You, you then think on things that are true and honest and just and pure and lovely, you get your mind off of your problems, off of that stuff, and you start thinking about these things that keeps you from worrying about your problem that you just asked God to fix. Okay, now that doesn't mean that you stop praying. Because, like, God could be trying to get you the blessing and the devil's blocking it, and th the only way for you to get that blessing faster is to keep praying so that, you know, the devil will be defeated faster and your answer can get to you faster, okay? So you will keep praying, but you can pray without worrying. Um, and uh, so, yes, we do, there are times when we do need to beg God for things, and begging God for something is not a lack of faith. He commands us to beg Him, okay? But, I, I, you know, and the Bible, there's more places that teach this. Um, fervent prayer. James five sixteen says, Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Fervent means to be active and work and it work, and it roots back to um that was G seventeen fifty seven and then it roots back to G seventeen fifty six. These are strong numbers. And it means to be active, operative, effectual, powerful that goes back to 1722, which means to give self holy to. And then that goes back to G2041, which means to toil as an effort or occupation, work, labor. So this is a fervent prayer. This is like the, this is like the supplication. So this kind of gives more uh, definition to what it means to have to be in supplication, to be begging God for something. I mean, this is where you are 
Like, you're giving yourself holy to prayer. Like, nothing else matters. You're on your face. You are praying. You're in dire need. And you are begging God to come and save you and deliver you from this problem that you've got. And you are desperate. And you're crying out to him. And you're giving yourself holy to it. I mean, you are laboring in it. You are toiling in this prayer. And you are, you know, you're uh, saying, you know, you're quoting scriptures. And you're just begging him to meet this need. Okay, this that's not wrong. I was, you know, when we I became a teenager, we moved to the south. I mean, we used to pray this way all the time when I was a child, and God moved and did things. When I became a teenager, we moved to the south, and the churches down here start. They would preach against this. They would say, "Oh, and and now it's so bad that they're pretty much preaching against even going. They they don't even want you to go to God. They they're saying that it's like a sin to even go ask God for anything or go to God with your problems." They've gotten so far away from Scripture. No, Scripture says we are to pray and we are to pray fervently. We are to have supplication. That is begging. That's crying out. That is saying, God, I'm in dire straits. I need you. Please come and help me. And that is not a lack of faith. That is not, he wants us to pray that way. How do we have faith? We just simply think him that he's going to do it. And then when we get done praying, we do not worry about it. We go and we put our mind on things that are true and lovely and just and pure and of good rapport and you know we're singing songs and we're praising him and then you know if if worry or doubt starts coming in we hit our knees again we start praying again you know until that peace of god comes and then our mind and we put our mind on other things that's faith to not have faith would be like someone who contacted me on reddit the yesterday saying well god don't love me and god's forsaken me and he's just not helping me and all this and um so they're just going to turn away from god and you know i tried to write to them and encourage them and gave them verses like this and stuff and say you know keep praying and god will you know help you and and share salvation with them and everything and trying to help them but that's and and that is like the seed on either the stony ground or the rock or the thorny ground. Um, one of them, you know, they leave God because of tribulation and persecution. The other one leaves God because of the cares of this life. Okay, they leaving God because you don't think He's supplying your needs like He should be can fall into either one of those categories. Um, and so someone who turns away from God because of those things aren't truly isn't truly saved. And, uh, because in the parable of the soul, the only one that's truly saved is the good, is the one that was the good ground. Okay? And they endure. We have to endure to the end. Yes, there are many promises in the Bible that God will meet our needs and everything. But even the apostle Paul went hungry. The Bible says that he suffered hunger. Okay? There are Christians who have starved to death. I have a book. This book right here is a short history of the Baptist. And I had been taught all my life, short history of the Baptist, um, it's backwards in the camera, I see that. Um, so, this is an older book, and I, when I started reading that book, because I had been taught all my life, and heard all my life, all these Christians and preachers in America saying, I've never missed a meal. God meets my needs. If you're a Christian, God meets your needs. You'll never miss a meal. Well... I had got experience that that wasn't true because I actually missed a few meals in my life. Um, and, uh, so God was trying to teach me then, you know, what they were saying wasn't true. So I knew that that wasn't true, but I didn't leave God because I knew, I was like, God was like, well, you didn't die. I was like, no. And he said, I got you food before you died. I said, well, yeah, I didn't even get close to death. I mean, I just missed a few meals. Um, guys, like, well, I provided you food. See, I provided your needs. You didn't absolutely need to eat. And I was like, okay. So, you know, it was kind of a hard lesson to learn, but I learned it. And I just kept trusting God. You know, I didn't turn away from God or anything. Um, then I started reading that book. And I, and I was like, okay, well, yeah, you might miss some meals. But I never thought that God would let a Christian starve to death. I was reading that book, A Short History of the Baptist, and it tells about a group of Baptists way back, I don't know, in the Middle Ages in England, 
who were exiled from the town and every and they were exiled to the wilderness and everyone was commanded not to help them in any way. And the government just threw them out into the wilderness and did not provide them with anything and they ended up starving to death and dying of starvation and exposure. I put I was that just hit me and I put the book I couldn't read it no more. I I put the book down for a while and I started praying and I was going, God I thought that you would meet all needs. Why did you allow these Christians to actually die? Why didn't you send manna from heaven or something? You know, why didn't you you know, what's going on here? I started searching the scriptures and I found out you know, God is sovereign, and he will do whatever he wants to do to further his kingdom. We are dust. We are his slaves. And he uses us how he wants to use us. And if it is his will for us to starve to death, then, you know, when we get to heaven, we're not going to starve no more. Sometimes it is his will, and if that's his will, we have to accept it. Now, thank God, most time anymore, you know, people don't starve to death. Um, at least... Not that I know of. I mean, there might be some people in other countries or something. I mean, hopefully not. Uh, there's a lot of missions organizations, people trying to get people food and stuff. Um, but, I mean, yes, a true Christian can starve to death because that is God's will and that is going to bring him glory. Yes, we pray and we ask, but we have to accept his will. And hopefully we never face anything so harsh as that. You know, we, God would have us starve to death. Um, hopefully that's not his will for us. But if it is, we have to accept that. He that endures to the end shall be saved. Okay, what is your soul worth? Is your soul worth a mess of pottage like Esau? Are you going to sell your birthright for a mess of pottage? Okay, we, we can't do that. So yes, we pray, we trust God, and we trust him that he is going to meet our needs. And if that is through death, then it is through, then we accept that because he met our needs. We then go to heaven, and it is only in heaven that we are promised that we shall never hunger nor thirst anymore. It's not, we're not promised that in this life. In a general sense, you know, it says he shall supply all your needs and all that. And yes, in a general sense, these things are usually provided for us, but they are exceptions. The Apostle Paul went hungry. He didn't die of starvation. He died by persecution and lost his head. But he did go hungry. Okay? So, we can pray, we can have faith, but we have to ultimately accept God's will. And we cannot turn away from him because we don't think he's meeting our needs properly. Because if we die, he has met our needs. Okay? It's a harsh reality. It's a harsh truth. And the church don't teach us no more because everybody's loud to see it. Everybody wants... Everybody's lover of them own, of their own selves. Nobody knows what it means to be dedicated, to be committed to a God. Nobody knows that anymore. Even the heathens knew that and were dedicated to their false gods in the times of Jesus and the apostles. They just had to change their God. Today, people aren't even dedicated. They don't even know what it means to be committed and dedicated. That means that you are going to follow Jesus until you die. Or even if it kills you, is as Job said, Though he slay me, yet will I serve him. Okay? Yes, we pray and we pray in faith and we thank him that he's going to meet our needs and that he's going to provide for us. And But then if he doesn't, we be like, Okay, it must have, you know, I did everything I was supposed to do. I obeyed him. I was serving him. I was doing what right and stuff because of the place says that he gives us what we ask for because we do the things that please him. Well, if you are in a situation where you are honestly serving God and something like that happens to where he doesn't provide your needs and you lose your house or you lose your job or you, uh, you know, starve to death, hopefully that never happens. But, I mean, if it was to happen, if you go hungry, you don't turn away from God. You just keep trusting him, keep praying, and, and also you do whatever you can, legally and morally right, biblically right, to try to help improve your situation, but sometimes you're in a position where you can't. You know, when Paul went hungry, he was in a position where he couldn't provide for himself. He couldn't get food. Because we know Paul worked. He wasn't lazy because he preached against laziness. And he said that, people, that a man was worse than the infidel if he didn't provide for his own house and stuff. So we know he didn't sin, okay? But he was in situations where he couldn't get food. And he went hungry. But he kept 
and I you know those Baptists out in the wilderness. They, you know, I guess it was winter time and stuff, and they didn't have enough food, and they died from starvation and exposure. Um, you know, that happens, and, you know, God had to really help me and deal with me, and I was able to understand it, because I just went, sir, I was going, God, I don't understand it. You know, I wasn't like, oh, I'm going to turn away from God, uh, Christianity is like, God doesn't meet our needs. I was like, God, where, where does your word say this? Because I've been taught that, first I was taught a Christian would never miss a meal. Then I thought, well, surely God went, okay, so a Christian might miss a few meals, but God's not going to let them starve to death. Then I find out Really good, holy people starve to death. True Christians starve to death. And I'm sitting there going. And my question was, where in your world is this? Why did this happen? Where does your world say this? I have been taught wrong. That's how we have to come. Uh, that's how our attitude has to be. When we, when God doesn't answer our prayers, when he doesn't meet our needs, or we find out that he didn't meet another Christian's needs, when we see things like that, all attitude has got to be, God, where am I wrong? Where was I taught wrong? What what does your word say? Where is this at? And he started showing me verses, you know, Paul went hungry. So if he's going to let, and, and then it says that nothing shall separate us from the love of God, and it mentions nakedness. Okay, so sometimes Christians may not have proper clothing to wear, and you would die from exposure if you're out living in a cave because you've been kicked out of society for being a Christian. Things like that can happen, okay? We, the, the only guarantee we have is that we're going to heaven. As a Christian, the only guarantee we have is that we're going to heaven. We don't have no guarantee, absolute guarantees in this life. In a general sense, for the most part, yes, God is going to provide you with food and provide you with a house and, and good clothes and everything, okay? So we pray and we trust Him, but there are exceptions. And if you find yourself in a situation that is an exception, do not turn away from God. Just keep faithful to him because then you'll go to heaven, you'll get rewards, and then you won't hunger or thirst anymore, and you'll have a white robe, and you won't have, you know, and, it, and the temperature will be good, and you'll be comfortable. Okay, so we have to know these things, that God is not obligated to meet our needs the way we think he should. Sometimes he meets our needs through death by taking us to heaven. And if that's his will, we have to accept that for ourselves and for others if necessary. Okay? Um, but when it comes to praying and showing God that you have faith in your prayers, um, you know, sometimes we have to get on faces. We have to beg. We have to have supplication. It's not just a fast prayer. He wants us to actually beg for things. You've got also where you have God saying, Jesus said that we ought to cry out day and night to him if we're in dire need. Okay, Luke 18, 1 through 8, you, you have this. It says, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Always to pray and not to faint. That's that walking for, in prayer, laboring in prayer, toiling in prayer, the begging, the pleading. Okay. Men ought always to pray and not to faint, saying, There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. Okay? So, he's saying, here he's saying that we ought to cry out to him day and night. If we're in dire need, if we really need something. We ought to, like, we're to plead and we're to beg and we're to cry out to him day and night. That is not a lack of faith. That is obedience to his word. That's how he wants us to pray. Okay? If we're in dire need, that's how he wants us to pray. That is not a lack of faith. Now, make sure that you also, it says with Thanksgiving in that other passage. So, make sure that you thank him that he's going to answer your prayer and meet your needs. And let him know that you accept his will. Um, you know, whatever it is. You know, and 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 let him know that you're not going to leave him. You're going to keep trusting him, 
no matter what. And but that you know you really really like for him to provide your need. Um, and uh, and you know like Jesus said, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? This is, you know, we're in bad times. I be- honestly believe we are in the Great Tribulation. They had that, uh, they did that covenant, that seven-year covenant last year, and then war broke out in Israel, and it's like the beast keeps trying to come to power, but he can't because my brother and I are the two witnesses, and we keep praying, you know, that he never does come to power. And those places in the Bible that shows that happens, okay? Um... And, um, and Daniel in places. And, uh, so that can happen. I believe that that's what's happening. Um, and, you know, so we are living in very bad times. And the devil is let loose. And he is fighting. And he is hindering. And we'll, we'll have him to pray. And, yeah, it's not a short little prayer. And God does it. No, that that doesn't work right now because the devil is let loose and he is fighting so hard. We have got to pray more. We have got to be more fervent and be more begging. We've got to really pray. And then it might be God's will not to meet that need the way that we think he should. Okay? Um, and we have to accept that. Okay? Um, but the faith is mainly that God is going to let his will be done and he and anything that he allows to happen to us is to further his kingdom he's he's not just being mean okay that that's a big part of the faith okay um now another thing is you know people are like well you know the disciples on the boat they got all scared and they cried out to jesus and jesus rebuked them because they didn't have faith because they cried out to him well god showed me because i had that question when god was showing me all this and god and i was like well what about why'd you get mad at the disciples in the boat they got they were all scared you know there was a storm and everything they were all scared they were going to die and they come to you and wake you up and said hey we're going to die you know help us and you got mad at them and he said they didn't just say help me they 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 questioned my care for them i said oh they did he said go look at the scripture Mark four thirty five to forty one, and the same day when the even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And when he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, and they awake him and say unto him. Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? See what they did wrong? They didn't just run to Jesus and say, hey, please help us, help us. Well, you know, there's a bad storm and and, it's, and can you make this storm calm down? Please help us and save us from the storm. They accused him of not caring about him. They said, Master, carest thou not that we perish? They went to God, they went to Jesus, they went to God. And they was like, you know, because Jesus is God and he's in the flesh. And so they go to him and... and and they're like, they're like, uh, Jesus, don't, don't you care that we're, you know, we're going, don't you care that we're about to die? I mean, they, they were mad at him. They go to him in anger, accusing him that he doesn't care about them. Do not pray that way. That's not how we're supposed to pray. That's why he rebuked them. He didn't rebuke them for crying out for help when they were in trouble. He rebuked them for being angry and then he didn't rebuke them for being scared he rebuked them for being angry with him and accusing him of not caring about them so don't go to god and say god don't you know i'm in all kinds of trouble you don't care about me i mean i mean Cameron, help me no that's not how you pray you you can be scared but you go to God humbly and you say, God, I'm, I'm in trouble and, and I really need your help and I know you know it. But I'm asking you because you want us to ask you and I'm begging you, please come and deliver me and help me from this problem I'm facing. 
see the difference? There was no accusation. There was no anger. There was a fear. There was a there was a there was a begging. There was a pleading. But that's not what they got in trouble for. He says to beg and pray fervently and cry out to him. You're not going to do that if you're not scared. Lack of faith. Fear is not a lack of faith. Anger and accusing God of not caring about you is a lack of faith. Okay? So let's get that straightened out. Because he says we're commanded to beg him. We're commanded to plead. We're commanded to cry out. We're not going to do all those things if we're not scared. Okay, it's not it's not wrong to be scared. It's wrong to be angry with God and accuse him of not caring about you. Okay, it's also wrong not to accept his will. Okay, so we have to be ready and willing to accept his will if it's not what we want. Okay. Um, and you know, of course, God is not going to get angry with us for being emotional and scared and and crying in tears and begging him for help as long as we're not angry and accusatory towards him you know the bible commands in romans twelve fifteen, rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with those who weep if you know the bible says because god will give you what you want you treat others the way you want to be treated because basically how we treat others is how god is going to treat us that's that teaching okay that's what that means. How we treat others is how God is going to treat us. So if God is commanding us to weep with those who weep, then he is not going to judge us and be angry with us because we go to him weeping because we are in trouble and needing him to deliver us. He is going to help us. Okay? He's And, and then if it's something to where we have to go through it and and he and it's not his will to deliver us and we have to go through it then he will weep with us okay jesus does that he kills for us he will weep with us and he will let us know this is his will we have to go through it okay um when jesus was not a sinner he never did anything wrong when he was facing death on the cross he prayed and cried out to the father and begged and wept and pleaded that he wouldn't have to go to the cross and die for us because I mean it was prophesied he could just become the people could accept him he could become king of Israel and there was another plan of salvation without him dying the the Old Testament is very clear about that okay um because he was God he was already forgiving sins he for salvation is forgiveness of sins he forgave sins when when you remember the lame man that was put on the bed and put down through the roof and he said, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. And the Pharisees threw a fit saying, Well, who can forgive sins but God? And Jesus was like basically saying, Yeah, I am God and I forgave him his sins. So Jesus didn't have to die on the cross to forgive us of our sins. Um that happened because people rejected him and they crucified him and that was like plan b and that's what jesus was praying for he was begging the father you know make it happen the other way to where i don't have to die um but that wasn't the father's will it was the father's will for him to go through that and suffer and die and jesus accepted that okay so we have to pray this he's our example we pray the same way we we beg and plead and cry and beg him to save us from our problems but if it's not his will then we accept that okay and he will let us know if it's his will or not um and uh and you know these i i realize you know these people down here the church that i went to they are very proud people they are they are they are very proud people they have a pride problem and God showed me, you know, not wanting to ask God for help is a false humility. Saying, oh, well, just thank God for things and don't get all upset. Don't go to God with your problems and just thank him for everything. And don't cry and and beg God for things. Have faith, you know, just say a short prayer and just say thank you that you're going to do this. And then you just have really strong faith and you don't have to beg and plead and cry. Well, for one thing, that's not what the Bible says. We're commanded to beg and plead and cry. That's what we're commanded to do if we're in dire need, especially. Okay. Um, the people who say that, they're proud. 
they don't they they feel embarrassed they don't want to humble themselves and be humiliated before God by crying out to him and begging him they're proud and also it doesn't it's not as good of a story to go tell everybody hey you know I wait I, I was on my face for two hours begging and pleading and crying out to God to save me from my problems and then all of a sudden knock him on the door and people and, and I got the money I needed Okay, well, that's not, people, a lot of people might look at that and go, man, you know, you just use God as a crutch, and, and you can't make it on your own, and all this stuff. And a lot of the world, especially, will, like, down that. And and, and that's humiliating. It's, it's, it's humbling, it's humiliating. It's not, it's not something to be proud of. But, man, if you can say, oh, yeah, God meets my needs, I just, you know, I don't have to beg or plead for anything. I just say, oh, God, I need this, you know, uh, God, I... Uh, uh, you know that I need this, and thank you that you're going to give it to me. I just thank God for things. I don't even have to ask him for anything. And I just thank him that he's going to give me this, and then he does it. Well, that's a lot more prideful, because that's more like you did something. It, it just seems to me like that's a lot more room for pride when people do it that way. And, you know, God doesn't like that. Pride is the number one thing that he hates. You know, and we should never feel embarrassed for crying out to God for help and begging Him because that is what He commands us to do. And even if it's trouble that we are in because it's our own fault, because a lot of times the trouble we get ourselves into is our own fault. You know, um, and you know, even if it is, because I've heard a lot of people say, "Well, you know, I didn't ask God to help me with that because that was my fault." Well, that's what God's there for. It says, the Bible says, if we are in any trouble, we are to go to God and ask Him for it. To not ask God for something is pride. To think that you can handle it on your own is pride. What does the Bible say? It says, do not lean into your own understanding, but trust God. With, you know, trust God for, you know, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Um, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not into thine own understanding. And all thy ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct thy paths. We are never to think that we can bail ourselves out of trouble or fix a problem on our own. That is pride. That's evil pride. That's not being responsible. That is evil pride. You have to, we are supposed to go to God humbly and say, God, I messed up. I made some bad mistakes. Please help me, bail me out of this and help me not to make these mistakes again and teach me what to do so I don't have these problems again. A lot of times this will happen with many, even many good Christians, this will happen to them when it comes to finances. Because that's just a really hard thing. And, you know, I actually went and took classes to learn how to not get into financial problems. And, um, you know, I've been there. And, you know, it, it's difficult in the world we live in. Um, because there's so much temptation and credit is so easy to get. And, <laughs> yeah, you, it, it takes discipline and prayer. And, you know, I've had to have God bail me out. Because I got myself in the trouble, and guys, like you need to get some education and learn how to handle your finances properly. So I actually went and took classes. So you know, he bailed me out, and then he was like, "Okay, now go learn how to not get yourself in trouble again." Um, and and he will do that. He'll help us. And um, and you know, to not want to ask God to help you to bail you out of your mistakes, that's pride. We are supposed to ask God to have mercy on us and to help us. We're supposed to be humble like that, okay? Now, you know, we should also learn from our mistakes and not keep repeating them, okay? But God wants us to humble ourselves and ask for his forgiveness and ask for his mercy and helping us out of the mess that we have gotten ourselves into. That is not wrong. That's what he's for he wants to help us he that's, that's one of the reasons why he died for us so that we'd have the holy spirit and he could teach us and he could help us it wasn't just to get us to heaven and forgive us all our sins it was to give us the holy spirit so that we would have a helper and a comforter to help us out of the messes we get ourselves into okay that's part of being a christian he's there and he will help us um you know now we also need to do what we can to help our situation but then just trust God for the rest because sometimes, you know, like I said, the Apostle Paul went hungry. So, and we know he walked and he was against lazy people. He preached against it. So, he found himself in situations where he couldn't help himself. He couldn't do anything to provide for himself and he had to trust God. 
And so, you know, we do what we can do and then we trust God. You know, a lot of people are like, well, I have faith in God so I don't go to a doctor. I just trust God to heal me. That's not biblical either. Jesus said in Luke 5, 31, And Jesus answered and said unto them, They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. Jesus said in Luke 5, 31, that the sick need a physician. Okay? Now, people will look at, Well, there was a king in the Old Testament who was taught to the physicians, not to God, and God killed him. Well, yes, let's go look at that. Second Chronicles 6, 10-13 says, Then Asa was wroth with the seal, that's the prophet, who had just come and prophesied judgment on him. Okay, so the king was wroth with the seal and put him in a prison house, for he was in a rage with him because of this thing. And as Asa, and Asa oppressed some of the people at the same time, and behold, the acts of Asa first and last, lo, they are written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. And Asa, in the thirty and ninth year of his reign, was diseased in his feet until his disease was exceeding great. Yet in his disease he sought not to the Lord, but to the physicians. And Asa slept with his fathers and died in the one and fortieth year of his reign. So he was in trouble just because he sought to the physicians. Look at what was going on there. He had, like, turned away from God. He had sinned. He had put in the prophet in prison who had come and sent him a warning from God to straighten up. And said that God was going to judge him. Then he started to oppress the people. I mean, he had sinned. His disease was God's judgment on him for his sin, and he knew it. But instead of humbling himself and going to God and begging for forgiveness and asking God to heal him and to, you know, help the, give the physicians wisdom and help them to give him the medicine, make the medicine work and stuff, he did not seek God at all. He just went to the doctors to get help. He, he completely left God out of it. That's what he got... That, that's what God was mad at him for. It wasn't just because he went to the doctor. Okay. The Bible also says that in Romans 14, 12, For one believeth that he may eat all things, another who is weak eateth herbs. That word weak there means sick, feeble, diseased. So it says that the sick, the feeble, and diseased are to eat herbs. Some of the best medicines are herbs, not pharmaceuticals. Um... Herbs can work a lot better. They don't damage the system. They help better and stuff. And so the Bible says, you know, if you're sick, you need to go to the doctor. You uh, need to take herbs and stuff. And yet there's nothing wrong with taking doctor medicine and stuff too. But the point of all this is we are to have faith in God. Yes, we pray for healing and we have faith in God. And then we seek God to know, well, do I do the doctor's medicines? Do I try to do something natural? And we do our own research and we seek God in what to do. And then he tells us to, what to do. And sometimes he may tell people to do chemo and stuff. Because sometimes maybe he wants to do chemo and natural stuff because there's somebody in the hospital you're supposed to witness to. Things like that can happen. Okay? Now, in my case, I didn't do chemo. He told me to go do the natural stuff because the chemo wasn't going to work and I was going to die. I had stage 4 cancer. It was in my liver and everything. And God was like, you go do natural stuff and live. And I lived. Um, I did DMSO and, like, nutritional stuff and sound therapy and all this. And I lived. I'm, I'm a, well, okay. And the chemo was not going to save my life. They had already said that. Um... You know, and and plus, you know, God healed me a lot of it, and I know that he put his hand to it and really helped heal me and stuff. And, you know, I sought God through the whole thing and was praying for healing, but then I was doing what I could. And I, and I had a doctor, and my doctor was working with me on the natural stuff because God blessed me with an actual licensed medical doctor who was... um okay with natural remedies and he knew about natural remedies and stuff and he was actually able to help me with that and that was a blessing um you know and you know so a lot of people wherever you depend where you live you might have to have like a medical doctor and then try to work with like a nutritionist dietitian or someone too or naturopath and, and, and have to have like two different doctors and a lot of medical doctors are against natural stuff so you have to fight that and you have to do your own research and stuff. Um, but you follow God's leading. You let God direct your steps. Lean not into your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. You, you allow God to direct you in the healing process. 
and you obey him whatever he says. That that's what that's how we have faith that we're going to God's gonna heal us when we're sick. You don't just pray and not do anything and be like, Oh, God's gonna heal me. That that's not what the Bible teaches. Okay? It's not what the Bible teaches. So we need to stay biblical. Um also the Bible does say that leaves are for medicine. So this is talking about like teas and stuff. Ezekiel forty seven twelve, this is a prophecy of a uh, future time, it says, And by the river, upon the bank thereof, on this side and on that side, shall grow all trees for meat, whose leaves shall not fade, neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed. It shall bring forth new fruit according to its months, because the waters they issued out of the sanctuary, and the fruit thereof shall be for meat, and the leaf thereof for medicine. So it actually says that leaves are for medicine. Okay, so that's where you get like a lot of herbal teas and stuff. I drink herbal teas. Um, I actually, well, oregano leaves, I drink that, um, for, like, colds and stuff. It works really good. And then I was having some gallstone issues, and I started getting dandelion root. Um, so it's not just, you know, those, uh, you can also do, like, roots and stuff for herbal teas. And the dandelion root saved me to where I didn't have to go to the hospital and have gallbladder surgery. I was able to, you know, it was able to get the stones, um... Dissolved enough to where I was able to pass them without surgery or anything. I mean, it was still painful, but I didn't, I, there was no blood. Uh, you know, I was, there, I didn't even bleed or anything. Um, and I was able to pass them okay. Uh, it was painful, but I got through it. Um, and I still drink dandelion tea. I'm, I, I've decided I'm going to drink a cup of dandelion tea for the rest of my life to help make sure I don't have any more stones okay because they could probably get bad enough to where the natural stuff wouldn't work and i'd have to go have surgery and i don't want to do that so you know take care of myself um and you know also when it comes to supply needs and stuff you know the bible says to walk to supply needs thessalonians three ten says for even when we were with you this we command you that if any would not walk neither should he eat so you know you don't just sit around and trust god and not do anything to try to better yourself. Um, you know, you pray, if you're walking and you're having problems, you know, you pray down that overtime. You pray down a raise. <laughs> you know, um, if, if, you know, you, you know, and you be willing to walk the overtime because a lot of times that's how God has provided for us my whole life. Like when I was a child and stuff, we would get into financially hard times, like the car would go out or something and Dad have to walk to work, and then we would start begging God for overtime, and he'd start working, you know, 50, 60 hours a week, and then we was able to buy another car. A lot of times, God will, God provides for us through overtime. I've had that happen in my own life. That has happened with my brother at his job, and so that's one way that God will provide extra money a lot. You know, he, he it doesn't just drop out of the sky. He makes us work for it. <laughs> you know, we have to, we have to, you know, be willing to work for it. Um, and sometimes that's doing extra work and getting overtime. So, you know, how do you show God that you, how do you pray in faith? How do you show God that you're trusting him? Well, you actually ask him, you obey the Bible and pray that like he says to. You ask him, you beg him, you plead with him, you cry out for him to help you out of your problems. Okay, but then also you accept his will as Jesus did when he had to die for us. Okay, because sometimes... God has allowed Christians to starve to death. Okay? Those Christians in England are the only Christians I have ever heard of that God allowed to actually starve to death. Most martyrs were killed by the sword or torn apart by beast. I mean, that was like... God had that happen to further his kingdom and to teach us to be an example for his people and for his church throughout the ages that hey you have to you know god is not absolutely obligated to meet all needs the way he we think he should he did meet their needs he took them to heaven they're okay now they're not hungering anymore they're not thirsting anymore he met their needs and we have to recognize how he meets our needs sometimes it may not be the way we think he should but we have to accept that, okay? Um, and so, 
you know, sometimes he wants us to go through hard times. He wants us to suffer. One, I saw a verse the other day that says that um, we have to suffer for him to be worthy of his kingdom. I, I didn't put that on here, but that's, it says uh, suffering, you know, something about for the kingdom for which you now suffer. Um, and that that's in there. And so, you know, it is given unto us in the behalf of Christ not only to believe on his name, but to also suffer for him. That's in the Bible. Sometimes that's God's will, and we have to accept that. But we can pray in faith, and we can trust him. And we pray in faith by, you know, we be, we pray biblically in the name of Jesus, and, and we beg him, and we plead with him to deliver us. And then we thank him that he's going to meet our needs and deliver us. We accept his will. And, um, you know, we do what we can to better our situation. You know, don't do anything sinful. But whatever is good and right, anything that we can do, we try. We do that to try to better our situation. And we just keep praying, keep trusting him. And we accept his will. And we don't ever turn away from him. And we don't ever accuse him. We don't ever get angry for with him for not meeting our needs because... He's God, he's sovereign, and we have to accept his will. And we don't ever accuse him of not caring about us because he truly loves us and cares about us. And if he takes us to heaven, you know, that's the best thing because then we don't have to struggle ever again. I mean, we're okay forever, you know, if that happens. And so we have to see things from God's perspective. Because in God's perspective, one of the best things he can do for any of us is just take us home. I mean, my goodness, we'd never have any more problems. We wouldn't be sinners anymore. We'd never be sick again. It's like the best thing you do for any of us is just take us home, you know. Um, so we have to look at things from his perspective too, not from ours. Because his thoughts are higher than all thoughts and his ways are higher than all ways. And so we show God that we have faith by accepting his will and trusting him that he will meet all needs in the way that he wants to. And we keep praying and asking him to deliver us and help us. And we don't turn away from him and we thank him for everything that he does for us and everything that he's going to do for us. And that is how you show faith. You know, there's nothing wrong with crying out to God. Yes, we are supposed to go to God with our problems. We are supposed to beg him for help. We are supposed to cry out to him. That's what he wants. To not do those things is pride. And so that is the lesson for today. And, um, you know, uh, just, just trust God and just pray. And, you know, but always be willing to accept his will. And like I said, like, I have never heard of anyone else that God ever allowed to starve to death. That usually does not happen. So hopefully, you know, that's not God's will for you or me. And he will always, you know, provide us with food. And, you know, like, you usually heal. Like, it's like more the norm. You know, usually we pray and ask God for something. He gives it to us. He meets those needs in those ways that... You know, we're used to him meeting them, and hopefully he does that. But if not, we have to endure to the end. We have to stay faithful to him. We cannot get mad at him. We have got to have that attitude and that commitment that, th that Job had. Though he slay me, yet will I serve him. We have to be that dedicated. And so that's the message for today. And thank you so much for watching. And come back next week, and we'll uh, do another lesson. And we'll go ahead and close in prayer, and then I'll do the blessing over you in Hebrew, and then in English, as found in the Bible in Numbers 6, 24-26. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and for your word and all your blessings. We pray that you will uh, bless us and help us to um, trust you and have faith in you properly and pray properly and help us to always accept your will. And we pray that you will have great mercy upon us and provide our needs and provide us with food and clothes and a house and everything and provide our finances and heal our bodies and everything and we pray that you will have mercy upon us and do these things for us and uh, help us to accept your will whatever it is and help us to uh, stay close to you and uh, and be obedient to you and trust you in all things at all times thank you lord in christ jesus name amen Yisah Adonai Panav Aleka Ve'asim Laka Shalom. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Thank you so much for watching this week. Please come back next week and we'll have another lesson. And if the Lord lays it upon your heart to support our ministry with any gifts, please use the links down in the PayPal. We've got PayPal and... um.
Patreon links down in the description. Uh, please use those and thank you. And um, uh, please share and like the video. And that helps us reach more people with the lessons. And uh, thank you so much for watching. Have a very blessed week. Bye and God bless you.